Okay. Okay. So first we will see what variables are. Okay. Just briefly. So variable, as the name suggests, variable that means something whose value is not constant. It varies. Okay. Yes. So as uh, for variables, what you can you can think of it as a placeholder. Okay. Placeholder or maybe 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 uh, a box. Okay. Where you can keep something. Okay. So that something will be data. Okay. Yes. So for variables, first basic thing that you need is the name of the box. Okay. Name. So first thing you need is the name of the box. So let's say if you want to create a placeholder. Okay. And uh, let's mm. say if you have a box here. Okay. In that you want to keep something. Okay. So to point it out or to uh, locate this particular box or this particular address or this uh, variable. Okay. You need a name so that you can address that and you can put some value in that particular name. Okay. So let's say we call it as X. Okay. So it, its name becomes X. Okay. And then in Apex. Okay, in Apex, you cannot in let's say you are uh, the next step is you have to define what kind of data it is storing. Okay. okay, whether it's a collection data type, whether it's storing a list of uh, things or it's storing some simple uh, string or maybe integer or maybe some S object, whatever type of data that you're going to or whatever things that you are going to enter or save in this particular box that you have to declare first before using it. Okay. Okay. okay so before you can use this particular placeholder you need to declare it first okay and in the declaration you need one data type okay and you need one name okay so these things you need while declaring okay, okay. and once you have declared then comes initialization okay so once you declare once you declare that means you have created a data type for that not created you have assigned one data type for that and you have de uh, declared one name for that for that variable okay once you have done that then you have to initialize that okay, okay. then you have to initialize initialize initialization means you're trying to put some value in that particular variable okay Okay, so these are the basic things that you need for, uh, need for declaring a variable. So variable is just like a memory location. Okay, it's a memory location in Apex where you can save some data. Okay, okay. so you need one pointer for that uh, memory location. That will be the name and you need one data hmm. type. What type of data that uh, placeholder or that memory location is going to save. So for that you need data type. Okay, once yes. you have declared that, then you can go ahead and you can use that variable. Okay. So basically okay. it will have two parts. One will be the declaration. Okay. And then it will have initialization. Initialization. Okay. So declaration means uh, declaring the variable. Here you will be declaring. Declaring what you have to declare. Declaring a data type. A name. A name. Okay. Yeah. Of the variable. So this is your declaring in one line. Okay, and then comes initialization. So in, in, in initialization, what we do in, in initialization, we uh, add Assign some value. Uh, add some value to the value. variable. Okay. Okay. So these two things you can do together also. Like in one line also, you can do declaration as well as initialization. That is called mm. dynamic declaration. Okay. So in this dynamic declaration, you initialize okay, and sorry, first you have to declare it. So you declare dynamic is and initialize dynamic means we, you, we are doing both of them together. Okay. Declaring as well as initialization. Both of them, if you are doing it together, then it's called dynamic declaration. Okay. Okay. So how you do that? Let's go ahead and take an example of initialization first. Okay. So if you're trying to create a variable, the first thing that that should come into the, your mind is what kind of data that variable should save. Okay. Okay. So once you decide what kind of data is can be saved in the variable, then comes data type. Okay. 
So I've already taken you through a couple of data types, which will be like predefined data type. Okay. Uh, predefined will be like uh, maybe string. Okay. Integer, boolean, all those are predefined. Predefined. Yeah, there's predefined data types, which is already there in Salesforce. You can go ahead and use it. Okay. okay. Then comes user defined data types. So user defined data types mm -hmm. we'll see a little bit later. Uh, apart from this, you can also use S objects. Mm -hmm. Okay. So S objects could be um, maybe account. Okay. Or opportunity. Opportunity. Or task. Any 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 object that is there in the Salesforce. Even custom objects. Any custom object that we created, maybe uh, hotel. Okay. So all these are also S objects. Okay. Any object which is available in Salesforce, which which is there in the Salesforce org, okay, that can be used as an S object. Okay. Okay. So yesterday, remember when we were uh, trying to create an account? Let's say okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we should not jump here. Okay. From the beginning, we have to start. So once you have the idea, like what kind of data that variable is going to mm -hmm. save then you just think of a name of that variable like what should be the name of the variable and you should always keep uh, some meaningful name okay. okay meaningful name so that you can remember that uh, it is belonging to that particular context like if you're trying to create one account uh, so you can say something acc1 acc2 if you write xyz uh, maybe abc then maybe later when you come back to it and you try to use it in the uh, in the context you will not be remembering like what it be actually belongs to and also if somebody else is using your code maybe somebody else says you have created the code and you have given it to that module you have given to somebody else so that they can integrate mm -hmm. in the main code so in that case if he's trying to read your code then it should be readable so he should understand like and he should remember that this is used for uh, uh, this purpose let's say you create one name for string so you should put name there like in 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 place of uh, the variable name or if you add some uh, maybe subject or whatever it is you have to have some meaningful name okay okay so once you come to the naming point then it comes uh, then we have naming conventions mm. okay then we have naming conventions right? like what all names are available or what all characters are available for you to name a variable okay so the name of the variable is actually called literal okay so there are two now when we come to naming convention okay we have to discuss naming convention okay before that we need to know what a literal is and what a keyword is okay so there are two things here one is literal and one is keyword okay one is literal and one is keyword in the uh, in if we understand keyword then we will be able to understand literal as well so what keyword is keyword means reserved words okay so reserved words means that these words are reserved for some specific purpose okay, okay. and once uh, this has been declared as a keyword then you cannot use it in anywhere else apart from what purpose it's defined for okay okay let's say uh, you have one keyword let's say final uh, new is there maybe final is there okay then static mm. is there all those keywords are there so that means these keywords these words are reserved for some purpose so create a new yes. object you use key, new keyword to make some constant you need uh, you use final keyword to declare uh, some thing as static you use static keyword okay. okay so these are the keywords there are a lot more keywords okay which are reserved and that keyword you cannot use a, use as a literal okay so okay. now we come to literal what literal is okay so literal are the names okay so if you try to name one variable okay mm -hmm. if you put one name for the variable that is a literal if you name a class that is another literal then if you name one method that's a literal okay constant so whatever the names are there that you declare or you create those are called literals using which you can address something okay okay so let's say we have one function called system dot debug okay mm. one function is there already created system dot debug 
so probably its system is a class and uh, debug is a static method so that you can use that static method using the class name <laughs> okay so here debug is a literal okay okay actually debug is a literal mm -hmm. okay because it's a name of the method yes okay so just like that if we create our own variables then those variable names or the class names method name constant name all those things will be called literals so they will be the name of that particular variable or class mm. okay so that is called literal okay. okay 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 so literals and keywords once we have then we have the naming convention so naming okay. convention in order to name uh, a variable or a class or a method or constant there are certain conventions that means there are certain rules as well as some optional uh, uh, ideologies or maybe uh, steps that uh, programmers are following okay to mm. keep it to keep the whole uh, code uniform so that it's it's more readable and it's more uh, like user friendly so what are the naming conventions so name naming conventions uh, Okay. When you're trying to name a literal, okay, so there are only three types of characters which is allowed in the literal. Okay, one is alphabet. Okay, one is the alphabets A to Z. Okay, then we have numbers, all the numbers that we have. Okay, and then we have sure. underscore. Okay, so alphabets are there, numbers are there, and underscore are there. Okay. So to to create a name for the uh, variable or any literal, so these combination combination of these three type of characters you can use. Okay. So in the beginning, and there's another rule here. So this is all required. I and mean, this is like a rule. You cannot break it. Okay. So this is not optional. So you have to use alphabets or numbers or underscore. Okay. Okay. In the name of the literal okay this is a rule okay and this is something which is like a rule or you can call it as a naming rule okay this you need to follow only these three types of characters you can include sorry yes okay only these three types of characters uh, you can use in the naming okay Okay, and it's not that you can use uh, the combination or like any pro permutation combination of this particular these three types of characters. That's not allowed. So when you name the first character that you are using, okay, the first character of that particular name or the literal should be an alphabet. Okay, you cannot start an uh, name of the variable or name any literal with underscore or number. Okay. Okay. So you have to let's say uh, we will try to declare one variable here. Let's say integer mm. integer underscore int or maybe underscore i. Okay. We will declare something like this. Okay. We will try to execute this highlighted part. Okay. So invalid character underscore i. We should not use that underscore i. Okay. So you should not start from underscore i. Underscore integer i so or it's instead of doing it here what we can do is we can do something like okay i then we will say something like underscore i equals to 10 and then we will do something like uh, system dot debug then underscore i equals to plus underscore i okay so we'll execute these three lines Oops. We'll execute these three lines okay so, so we cannot define it like this yes so we can use it like this this will work mm -hmm. okay as it is starting with alphabet that is fine Okay, if you use it like this, it will work. It will not throw us any error. Okay, so this is working fine. Okay, and if you use okay. something, and also if you start with a number, okay, let's say if you start with a number, let's say 
to y okay in that case let's see what happens okay. if you start with a number so unexpected token so numbers also we cannot uh, start in the um, should not be the starting character of the variable yes okay so the only thing which is left is the alphabet so you have to start with an alphabet alphabet okay and let's say if you put one underscore here okay and you use one underscore here okay and let's see what happens Oops. Okay, now we try to execute highlighted okay so in that also you cannot use the underscore why okay we can I'll use tell you yeah we can use uh, underscore also but not here mm -hmm. okay i'll tell you in what places we can use an uh, underscore okay mm -hmm. let's try to use one number here okay okay now if you try to execute this highlighted part so this is working fine yeah okay so let's try to use something yeah. like this okay let's try to use an underscore in the middle and let's try to do now this is also not throwing any error so all these errors that it is th it was throwing those errors are compile time error it's not a runtime error okay okay so while saving the code on the on salesforce will automatically compile that code Okay, only once it's mm. compiled successfully, then you can go ahead and run it. Okay, because Apex okay. is strictly typed. Okay, you have to mm. compile the code before you can run it. Okay, and mm. syntax has to be followed. So, there are some certain limitations uh, where you can use numbers and you can use the underscore. Okay, so what we saw is you can use the numbers anywhere apart from the beginning. Okay, yes. while naming the variables, you can use the uh, numbers anywhere apart from the beginning. Okay, and mm -hmm. you can use alphabets anywhere. Alphabets are allowed anywhere, no problem. You can use anything. Okay, you can use in the beginning, in the end, in the middle. Alphabets you can use anywhere. Okay, that is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, but underscore, you cannot end the variable with underscore. Yes, we cannot start with... Uh, yeah, we cannot underscore. start with underscore. Starting is only alphabets. The first yes. character has to be alphabet. Mm. Okay, let's say if we try to put some special character star. Okay, we'll put something special character star. Let's see what happens. Okay, we try to execute this. Okay, so it will not take it. Okay, because this star, this star is reserved for multiplication. Okay. Okay, so this star you can use it for multiplication. If you use some plus, plus is used for addition. You cannot use all those things. Okay, so there are only three types of uh, character sets which are allowed to be named uh, to be used for naming conventions. Okay, so alphabets, numbers, and underscore. Underscore you can only use in the middle of the variable name. Okay, in the in the literal you can only you cannot end with a underscore because in Apex here we have lots of objects that we create which has underscore underscore c. Right, underscore has a purpose here. It has a different purpose as well. So you cannot use underscore to end it or do something like that. Okay, so there are certain limitations for that. Okay, and the numbers, you can use it anywhere apart from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is about the naming convention. All right, so this is the rule that you have to follow while uh, this is not the convention actually. This is the rule that you have to follow while creating the literals. Okay. Literals. Okay. Now in order to create literals, the convention, what is convention that we follow? The convention that the coders follow is using camel case. Okay, now what's a camel case? Okay. Okay, see all the keywords that you are using, all the keywords will automatically be highlighted in a different color. If you see, I have typed mm. some camel case here, automatically its color is changed because here it's reserved for switch case. Switch case. Okay, so all the keywords like class and is also reserved for something else. Okay, it's like an and uh, operator, it's a logical mm. operator. Okay. okay, so all the keywords that you type automatically your developer console or the anonymous window will change it into a different color so that it, uh, it you can make out that it's a, a keyword. Okay, and it yes. cannot be used. Okay, okay, so 
what's a camel case okay camel case is uh, let's say if you are trying to join two words um, let's say uh, start with capital letter uh, no not starting actually already uh, always with a capital letter so the point here mm-hmm. is let's say you write camel case in the camel case format let's say camel so it should be something like camel and so there are two words here right one is camel and one is mm-hmm. case so in mm-hmm. order to uh, dem- uh, uh, show that the case is a second word okay mm-hmm. let's say if you join it then it becomes one single word right so you yes. can't make out the difference so in order to do that you have to make it as upper case okay okay so this is mandatory in convention it's not like forced but this is how we follow in uh, camel case that the second word should be upper case okay. so the first character of the second word should be uh, upper case so if you write something like convention and if you add convention also to it okay so in that case you have to make the first character as a upper case in javascript camel case in the sense camel that is c also capital and k here only we are second word na hello hello i didn't i didn't hear you uh, what did you say yes yes in, in javascript camel case in the sense first letter and the middle middle word starting letter we use capital letters na hmm. no see camel hmm. case one is lower camel case and one is upper camel case okay in the camel case one is lower and one is upper upper okay lower camel case this is the lower camel case in which the starting mm-hmm. character is uh, lower okay okay if you are using upper camel case then you have to use something mm-hmm. like this yes starting this is upper 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 camel case and the lower camel case this is lower camel case okay okay so there are two types of camel cases one is upper and lower so they have specific uses mm mm-hmm. okay they have specific their own use so if you see even in javascript any def, um, defi- method which is defined they will never start with a upper camel case yes let's say document get element by id Dot, you have something by called ID. get element by id right hmm. so it will start something yes. like this yes okay. so it's lower camel case okay 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 so this is the lower camel case that you follow and the upper camel case is this is the upper camel case where the first character is the upper case this is just a convention that people follow it it's not a rule you can name it whatever you want as as long as it is uh, under the uh, this criteria should be fulfilled okay 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 so lower camel case and upper camel case and when to use a lower camel case and when to use upper camel case so when you uh, in apex when you are defining a class okay when you are creating a class for a class you use this so there are three, three types of things that you will be creating one is class okay one is variable and one will be method okay these three things will you will be creating in order to use your code or in order to create some uh, structure of the code okay so when you should be using all that that we will let me okay so if you're trying to create a class so for for a class okay you have to use upper camel case okay okay so for variables you have to use lower camel case and for methods also you have to use lower camel case lower camel case okay, so only for class you have to use upper camel case okay so if you remember uh, system class the system class that we saw system in with in system dot debug hmm in system dot debug we have system class right this is this is a class okay if you go to the documentation part you can explore the class even more or we can system class in uh, apex 
Okay, let's try to open the system class. Okay, so what I want to show here is as system is a class name, so that is why upper camel case is followed. Okay, so the first character is uppercase. Yes. So that is what we also have to follow. Okay. But while writing the class itself, that class first letter should be small only, no? That, huh, that is fine. Yeah. Okay. See, Apex is not case sensitive. Okay. okay. Apex is not case sensitive. Okay. So that should not be a problem. JavaScript is case sensitive that I know. But Apex here is not case sensitive. Okay. Okay. But to make the code more readable, we have to follow these conventions so that if there's some, okay. if somebody comes across that particular name somewhere, then he will understand that mm -hmm. yes, it's a class. That's why it, the first character is capital and the rest of them are small. Small. Okay, and if they come across that uh, the maybe the lower camel case, they'll realize that it's a, either a variable or it's a method. Okay. Yes. And to distinguish between variable and a method, variable methods will always have uh, two small brackets next to it. Okay, so that's how you, they can distinguish that this is that uh, and this is belongs to variable, this belongs to method, this belongs to class. Okay, so this was about literal. How to how do you name a literal? So when when it comes variable class and method there's another thing that we are going to create we are going to use in our code which is constants yes. okay so to name our constants we have a different convention that we follow so that even if it, if somebody looks at that particular variable name or uh, sorry the constant name they'll re, uh, come to know that it's a constant Okay. okay, so to create a constant, how do we create a constant? Constant is uh, similar like a variable only, but it, that value cannot change. So you will declare it as a final. So using final keyword, you will create a constant. Okay, and the name that you will choose. So all the characters in the particular name, in the name of that constant should be uppercase. Okay. okay, let's say you declare, you try to declare one gravity constant. Okay, so you can say it as the constant will be some maybe float. Okay, so what you can say is uh, maybe static, all static and all we'll see later. So you can just say final and you define one data type and let's say integer. Okay, and you can say gravity, something like this. Okay, okay. or here you can put one decimal. Decimal data type also you can put gravity equals to 9.89. Okay, so now if everybody any anybody looks at the code and somewhere he sees one system dot debug is written, and in system dot debug if it's written as like maybe gravity. Okay, let's say the person is not aware of this particular part. If he is looking at the code mm. here, then he can come to know that mm. gravity is a constant because all the characters are uppercase. Okay. Okay, so that is why naming convention is followed. Okay. okay. So that you can share the code and it, whenever you share the code, it should be more uh, readable and people can understand what is the meaning of your code. Okay, what you are actually trying to do. Okay, so that is the whole purpose of following the naming convention. Okay. okay and in order to uh, have a proper naming okay the rules are created so you have to follow these rules okay you cannot use a literal uh, keyword inside a literal okay okay i hope you have got the difference between literal and a keyword so you cannot mix them yes. okay okay you cannot mix them yes. okay and these three character sets you can mix but the make sure that the first character is alphabet and last character is not an underscore not score, not an underscore yes yes so that is the naming rule that you have to follow okay and the convention or the what you call maybe the fashion you can say the fashion that we follow in order to name the literals okay and that fashion is camel case that you have to follow camel case. okay so one is lower camel case one is upper camel case upper camel case mostly we have we, we will use for classes and inner classes Class. or maybe interfaces okay mm. so when we create interfaces mm. also maybe class then inner class is also okay mm. 
then we have interface also okay abstract classes all those structure are using the upper camel case okay okay and whatever falls inside the class the variables methods cons uh, variables and methods they are using the lower camel case and constants are using all the upper case all characters should be upper case okay so this is not mandatory this is not required that you have to do but we do we follow coding standards yes we are coding coding standards yes okay because the application that you are designing now doesn't mean that you will be always there in the company and you will be there to maintain the code if some uh, yes. some some implementation happens and they want to uh, add some functionality to that so whatever remaining mm -hmm. part of the code maybe somebody else is modifying so he if he reads it he should be able to understand what is there yes okay and along with the naming convention there is something called indentation mm -hmm. okay let's say let's try to jump to our class okay i'll show you some indentations how do we follow uh, okay let me try to open any any class let's try to open one class let's see if we have any classes already okay let's say we have one hello world class hello okay okay so if you see this indentation means spaces on the left hand side and how the code is arranged like left aligned right aligned center aligned all those are indentations okay mm. so when you create a new class okay when you go ahead and you go to file and you open a new class let's say test no we will not call it test indentation i'll uh, say indentation uh, and in the while naming a class you cannot use space also only underscore you can use indentation demo you can use it something like this Okay. okay so if you notice here the first character i have kept as uppercase uppercase okay because that is how the convention is there you can also use it as small case but that should we shouldn't do that okay so let's try to create one uh, class as indentation demo so as soon as you click okay automatically salesforce will create one class and if you see here class. the scope is arranged like this okay and if you go here and if you enter it doesn't come to the extreme left hand side it doesn't come here it comes here okay okay so if you keep something everything in the same part like uh, let's say if you copy everything and you paste it in a notepad okay paste in a mm. notepad so right now it's following that but usually it will come something like this okay so everything if you if you remove the word wrap let's say if you remove the word wrap mm. then everything will come in this very unorganized okay so it doesn't look mm. nice so you don't know where the scope is starting and where the scope is ending so if you ending. yeah if you format in the word wrap okay whatever it it was initially okay it was initially like this now you understand that the scope is starting here and the scope is ending here so one method is ending here mm. second method is here third method is here that you can easily make out okay and the class is starting here and ending here okay so this under this parent scope there is something else that is why it's indented on the little right side okay so under this scopes something is there that's why it's indented a little more on the right side okay so this spaces these spaces that we leave that is intentionally we leave spaces so that it's more read readable okay mm. So this, these static variables, we should have, start, we can start here also, okay. But that is not how we follow, okay. So in order to make it more readable, okay, we follow it something like this. So this spaces that we int leave intentionally, these are called indentations, okay. And also like space between the, um, if you put some zero. Uh, let's say equals to or some operator if you're using you can also leave spaces here okay mm. okay okay so these are called indentations okay. okay so these spaces will be ignored by the compiler anyway so you can use the spaces mm. okay. okay let's say if you're writing some line which is like pretty big so let's say uh, if you have name equals to and if you have some more fields okay okay let's say if you have some more field here okay 
so if let's say if you have some more field and if you put it some like this like this okay because in, in account there are lots of other fields as well okay. and there are lots of other fields if you try to put a value to that field it will keep going to till the end of the line so in that case what you can do you can put one indentation here okay it will come something like this or you can also put it here okay and then you can separate some of them here so that everybody can use it uh, read it in the same line okay. okay without going and scrolling till the end yes okay. okay 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 so every time you have to create one code you should create something like so that everybody who is who is uh, not from very very technical background he doesn't have to like uh, storm his head uh, so that he can understand the code like every line by line he should not like get into the code okay you should make it very simple and very uh, readable okay so that it should be it can be used by anybody else okay any other programmer as well okay so that is the basic things that we follow while uh, creating a code okay and along with these things there is something else which is called as comments Okay, so comments are another, another uh, tool that you have so that you can make your code more readable. Okay. Okay. So there's something called comments. So comments are also something which is ignored by the compiler. Yes. Okay. So code coverage and all those things uh, that we'll see later in the test classes. So that code coverage mm -hmm. will also not include comments. It will not uh, consider comments. So you can write as much comment as you want and also there are certain governor limits on the line of code that you uh, that you write and the memory that your code is uh, taking okay so in those governor limits also the comments are ignored okay because the the salesforce org that we are using to program or to create our application it's a shared resource everybody is sharing the same resource okay if yes. you yourself are exhausting lot of resource then others will not get the, the share that they have it will either slow down for them or they'll get le less memory or something like that. Yeah. Okay. It's just like maybe water or any other natural resource that is there. So that's Salesforce is also providing you a resource. So you have to use that resource responsibly. Okay. So let's see how we can use the comments. So there are two simple types of comments. Okay. One is single line comment and multi -line one is comment. multi line. Okay. It's pretty much same as in JavaScript also. JavaScript, yes. Yeah, it's similar fashion. So single line and multi line. In a single line comment, you have something like this double slash. Forward slash. Yeah. So two forward slashes if you use, see automatically mm -hmm. it has changed the color to brown. Yes. Okay. So all these are single line comments. Single. So let's say if you have a long code, you don't want to put single and like double slash everywhere in, in front of every uh, line then for that you have something called multi-line comment forward slash star yes so forward slash star star and then again forward slash so whatever is there inside this these two stars will be ignored by the compiler and they will be comments yes okay. and if you keep pressing enter 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 it will start it will keep creating some star here star here star here so that it's, it's denoting that it's a next line like that okay 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 right. so that is what multi-line comment is okay it could be either in this fashion or it could be in some uh, like this also this is also okay. multi-line comment you can just uh, and you can end it with the star okay so comments are also very very powerful tool so if you want to uh, let, let's say you try to create one code and you realize that you can do it in a better way okay and you don't want to delete the initial logic so in that case what you do you in keep the initial logic commented and you write the next logic whatever logic comes in your mind or however you have improvised the code so you can keep the both both of them uh, in the code okay and let's say uh, after some time if you try to debug and you you see that the second code is not working properly it's it, it has some bugs so you can comment that and you can get back to your initial code Yes. So all those things you can do with the comments. 
okay so as of now if let's say i'm demonstrating all this and i'm i have written lots of garbage value here which is not com compilable if you select and if you try to compile it will not compile so if i want to keep all these things i don't want to delete that so i'll just put one simple comment so i'll uh, start from wherever i've started i'll put one comment here and automatically it will end here okay so i have added one multi line comment here yes yeah okay and another use of the comment is uh, while creating any class okay let somebody is trying to create one class okay so at the top of the class usually how people do it is they'll put one comment here okay they'll put one comment here and in the comments they'll usually mention who has developed this code okay and what is the date on which this code was developed okay as of now if you uh, whatever modifications that you do salesforce will keep a time stamp of that okay but usually this is how a uh, convention is followed so who has created the code and who has last modified it on what date it is created okay which release is this particular code for okay which version is it Okay, all those things you can mention in the comment at the top and you can uh, keep it so that let uh, somebody else if he comes or even some description of the code like what this code is doing what this class is doing okay you can put some description comments here so that whoever is reading the code they can understand that yeah this is what is there in the class okay and if even if you are writing some complex logic inside uh, your uh, inside your methods or if inside your class or you want to uh, like declare or uh, show what is the purpose of this particular variables that you create so you can put one comment in the end here showing that uh, purpose of the whatever is the purpose of this particular variable where are you going to use it later okay or if you are creating some complex logic after a line of the logic you can just or maybe before the line of the logic you can show what is the logic that you are trying to implement okay so that the person doesn't have to go through the whole code and even when you are analyzing the code let's say you are going through somebody else's code and you try to analyze you want to make a note that yeah this is uh, this particular method will do this so you can just put one simple comment and you can write your comments and you can save it yes okay so comments are everywhere okay you can use it everywhere that's not a problem but you cannot use it in the middle of the line okay you can use something like let's say if you put some what is so in the single line whatever is after that particular uh, those two slashes will be commented okay and if you see now it has given us a problem that this particular line is not ending okay so an unexpected token is throwing one error Okay, so in that case, what you can do is you put something like this. Okay, so this in the multi-line comment can also be used for less than a line, something like that. I mean, so you can use it in the middle also because it's declaring the start and is declaring the end. So here, starting point is this and ending point is this. But for a single line comment, you don't have a ending point. So whatever is after that, it will be commented. Okay, so starting point is here, but the ending point is not here. So it can go on and on and on. But for a multi-line, you have you are declaring one end point. That this is the end point. So whatever is in middle, you can write whatever you want. That will be all commented. So still it will be read as one single line, and it will still compile your code. Okay, if you still go ahead and if you save it, it will compile fine, no problem. Okay. Okay, so that is the purpose of commenting. Okay, okay, okay. So let's get back. So what all things we have covered? Literals, keywords, naming conventions, naming rules, comments, single line, multi line. Okay, so multi line comments will look like this. Yes. Okay, and the use of multi uh, use of comments. Okay. Okay.
Okay, what else? Okay, so this was all about the naming convention and the comments and uh, the naming rule and how we create variables. Okay, how you create. Uh, okay, we have seen only creating variables. Okay, let's now see how we create a method. Okay, so before that first we have to see what is the use of a method. Okay, so in order to get any task done from the computer or in order to get any task done by your Salesforce uh, class, okay, you have to create methods. So methods are the ones who are actually doing the task. Okay, so methods are the one where you put all the logic in that method. Okay. okay. Let's try to, let's say if you want to add two numbers or if you want to print something, all those are done by methods only. Okay. So by variables, you can have placeholders. Okay. With variables, you have created one memory and you have created one placeholder so that you can save data. Okay. But to make use of that data to get uh, maybe print that data or manipulate that data or import data, export data, all that thing that you can do is you can do using methods. Yes. To perform any operation, we want method. Yes. To perform any operation, you need methods. Yes. Okay. So in order to declare a method, how do you do? So, uh, okay. Okay, before creating a method, what we'll uh, see is we'll see access specifiers. Okay, what are access specifiers? Public, private. Yes, so access specifiers are the ones which are declaring that uh, the access of that particular code. Okay, so from where all you can access it. What is the scope of that particular code? Okay, that is defined by the access specifiers. Okay, so like public. Okay, maybe private, global. Okay, all these are access specifiers. Yeah, protect you. Yeah, so these access specifiers you can use it for uh, variables as well as uh, methods and class. So for class you can only use public. Okay, in Apex for class you can only use public. If you make it private, then you cannot uh, use it uh, in test classes or you cannot call it from anywhere. Okay, you can declare a class as global. Okay, what is the difference between global and public? Is that public is for the own org. So in our org, our org is this uh, this under this namespace is our org. So if we access it from let's say some web services there from other application, you're trying to access this particular class in order to show some data. Okay, to order in order to exchange some data. So our class should be readable to that other org also or as well or maybe some other application as well. So in order to expose that globally, you have to declare that uh, part of the code, maybe variable or method or class, whatever it is, you have to declare as global. Okay. okay, and if you have declared the method as global and if the class is still public, then the, um, the meaning of global is not uh, implemented. So in order to have some global uh, members in the class, you need to declare the class also as global. Okay. okay, so let's come back to our code. Let's say if this class you want to expose it to web services as well. So or maybe if you want to expose only this particular account method, if somebody is trying to hit your org and they want to return an account. Okay, they need one account. Uh, if you create some account in your org, then another account should be also created in that uh, web services uh, application. Okay, so if you want to create some kind of integration like that, so let's say you have created this one for web services. You have reserved this method for web services, but this is public. So this method they cannot access from the uh, outside your org. So to do that, you need to make it as global. Okay, so then from the outside of your org also, if they try to hit this method, they will get one account. Okay. Just declaring global is not enough. I mean, we have to do a lot of other connections as well. So I'm just for demonstration, I'm just showing. So now if you see, as soon as I declare it global, it's showing us an error. Okay. So what is the error? If we see defining type for global methods must be declared as global. Okay. So whatever is defining our uh, global method, 
so whatever is out outside or the parent of that particular global method should also be declared as global okay so here our class should also be global okay so now it should be working fine i should not throw us a day error okay okay so now let's try to make it as uh, let's say we'll make it as public and we try to make it as let's say private okay now let's try to save it and let's see what happens okay so now again it's showing us an error okay and what is there yeah so top level type must have a public or global visibility so you cannot make a class as a private okay so in apex you cannot make a class private you have to make it either public or you have to make it as a global okay so you can declare methods and you can declare variables all those you can have it as private even constants you can have private okay but class you cannot have private okay so that is what a access specifier is okay so so to create a method the first thing that you need is you need a access specifier okay then you need something like static or non static that we will see a little bit later after that you need one return type of the method okay so that means what type of data that method is going to return okay so what is the type of data that uh, method is going to return let's say if you call that method the methods will not be uh, executed automatically you have to call the method in order to get some work done from them okay okay so when you call that some methods return some value you want some methods to return some value or you want some methods to uh, do some work and not return anything to you okay so in order to do that you have to use the return type of the method so if the method is not returning any value to you then you can have it as a void void so return type is void that means it's not returning us any value okay and if you want to return any value then you need to specify the data type of what type of data that uh, method is returning so that could be maybe integer or any predefined data type it could be a user defined data type also it could be an object also it could be a s object also okay it could be even a collection it could be a map it could be a list set anything so any data type that you can declare for a variable that could be a return type of a method okay so then you have some return type okay now after the return type it comes the literal a literal is the naming name of the particular method okay so first thing which comes is the specifier specifier and uh, okay which is the access specifier you can call it access specifier uh, okay access specifier <coughs> then you have something called return type return type okay then you have the literal literal okay and then you have the signature okay after signature you have body okay so literal is the name of the method and signature is the consist it's consist of the name and the parameters inside the method okay so let's say if uh, in that particular method if you want to pass some values to that method and according to those uh, values that you pass you want to do some calculation okay in that case you have to pass those values from the signature okay and body of the method is the main uh, body where you write all the logic okay so let's see them one by one so first is the access specifier let's say as of now we'll keep it as public and then the return type let's say we don't want to have it as any return type so as of now we will we'll keep void. it as void void there's nothing it's returning then you have to keep it as void okay then you name the method let's say we'll call add numbers okay or we'll call it add numbers so see i have i have put some uh, name of the method so that somebody if uh, reads the name they will understand that it's adding numbers probably okay so just like that so even the camel case is followed so it's using lower camel case because it's a method okay so after our name no before our name what we have to put we have to put one data type here or oh, data type we have already put one void then we have to one uh, literal after this we have to 
add the parenthesis and in the parenthesis we have to use the parameters signature yeah signature only so signature this is this is called parenthesis okay, okay these are called parenthesis okay so inside the parenthesis or inside the brackets we have to use the uh, pass the parameters okay so signature consists of the name of the method and the parameters okay, okay so whatever parameter you pass inside this whole thing is called signature of the method okay, okay so as of now let's not pass any variable uh, let's not pass any value inside this so now we'll have the body in the body what you can do is you can let's say add two variables so we can add or what we can do is we can add maybe four plus five let's say you do something okay some simple calculation that you do okay so whenever you call this method it is going to add four plus five okay so that is the purpose of this let's say if you want to add some numbers which you have you are passing okay if you want to pass some values to this then you have to use the parameters here okay in this parameter you pass uh, you have to have some placeholders or you have to create some local variables so that you can store the value that is being passed to this method okay let's say if you want to have some two integers integers so integer let's say a and integer b so two variables you are taking two variables uh, two placeholders will be there so if whenever you call this method you have to pass these two two uh, values to this two parameters okay without that you cannot call this method okay okay so once you are passing those two variables then you can add those two numbers a plus b okay okay so whenever you are calling this method these two variables will be these two uh, variables uh, all these are called local variables actually okay so this is local to only the method if you go out of the method these two variables are, does not exist okay so these are local to the method that you are using okay so this is how you can define a method okay let's say if you want to return the uh, the addition or whatever is the result you want to return so the return type will also be an integer okay so as addition of two integers will always result in an integer so you can return an integer here so here what you can do is you can do one return a plus b okay okay so this is how you create one method so whenever you try to uh let's say as of now let's make it as static i'll tell you what static is in detail okay let's make it as static okay so every time or not even static every time you call this method you have to uh, pass these two parameters and then you have to, uh, it will return you uh, the sum of the method some of the variables okay okay so this is how you declare a method okay then probably in the next class we'll see how to create one class okay 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 so as of now you have any doubts any questions anything that you want to ask or maybe add mm, no bro okay okay so please try out. Use, yes 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 you user defined data types you told something you that defined data types and uh, you didn't give any information about it yeah when we create class and when we create object that is when we will be using the user defined data types so the classes and the objects that you are creating that is also a data type only okay so okay. let's say for this class let's say for this hello world class we create one object okay so okay. in the anonymous window we go and we try to create one object for this class so we'll do some something like you know the syntax right we'll try hello yes, world hello uh, some object you give, yeah, hw you give equals to new, new hello, yes. hello world. Okay, and this is how you usually create an object. Okay. Okay. So when you are creating an object, just mm -hmm. focus on this part. Okay. Usually, when you declare one variable, if you usually when you declare one variable, what you do, you write integer. Let's say i. This is how you declare I. one variable, right? 
so this is what mm. data type of the variable right the data type of this i yes okay. similarly what is the data type of this hw it Hello. Is yeah so here what we are doing is we are creating one data type right so yes. like we have just created one data type of this hello world yes okay so this is one variable and this is one data type and in this variable the only information that it can save is of type hello world it cannot save anything else okay so this is called user defined data type okay okay here user is defining the data type right we are creating data type integer string all those are already created so those are predefined data types but hello world data type we just created okay okay so that is why it's called a user defined data type okay okay and what the data type can contain the information that it can contain is only related to hello world so the structure hello. that we have specified here so this is the structure of our data type it can have these many variables and the variable will hmm. be named as this it will have these many methods so all this structure that we have defined is the data type okay Okay, so hello world, we are creating a class, but it's creating one data type only. So it is called as predefined data, okay. user defined data type. Okay, so this is our user defined data type. Type. Okay, okay, okay. So I hope you understood uh, what user defined data type is. Yes, understood. So, okay, so here the data type is defined by the user. Yes. Okay, which is the hello world. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Anything else you want to add? No, bro. Fine. Will you please share this? I mean, that yes. PDF forms right now. That is better. I can study in office if I get the time. Okay, sure. I'll I'll share those documents. I uh, you have my mail ID, na? Right? 